Hi, I'm Peachy, and I forgot my words already. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Peachy, and in this video, we're going to show you how to paint the Galadark scenery found in the Into the Dark Kilting box set. Now, this is the final part of a three part series where we're taking you through how to paint absolutely everything in that box set. So, if you want to know how to paint the Navy Breaches or the Crook Kim Band, check out those separate videos if you want to know how to do that. So, today, I'm going to be a wizard and show you how to turn plastic into rust. Welcome to the painting phase. Now, painting scenery can be quite off putting as there's lots of little details such as skulls, skulls, and even more skulls. And don't forget all those light bulbs. So there's quite a lot to pick out. Well, today, what we're going to do is take you through a really quick and efficient way of painting your scenery from the Galadark set with minimal effort. Now, granted, there will be a little bit of detail to pick out, but you know what? It's optional. You don't have to do it. So let's get cracking. Now, I've been made aware the Galadark scenery doesn't fit so snug once it's been painted. So all those connectors actually stop you from pushing it together. Now, as opposed to tediously masking everything off, uh, as I've seen a lot of people do, what I'm going to do is just build two big, long duplicate lengths of the actual Galadark scenery and then spray them as a solid thing, as you can witness by my mighty length here. First of all, what I'm going to do is undercoat the entire length using Chaos Black. And once I've done that, I'm just going to dust over the top with some lead belcher. If you spray this whilst it's wet, you do get a better blend. With the coat done, what we're now going to do is apply Dirty Down Rust. Now this is new to me, so I've never used it before. I'm very excited about using it. Now there are many ways to apply this. One is to apply it to the model straight from the pot and work it in like so. Once applied, use heat to help the effect. Here I've used a hairdryer. Another way I've discovered, which I prefer, is to apply a dollop or two into the lid, add several brushes of water like so, then whilst it's on the wall section, douse it in water. Then for heavier, rustier patches, grab some straight from the pot and slap it on whilst it's wet. This method not only helps taint the wall section, it looks more random and effective. And the beauty of this, by thinning it down, is it allows your rust paint to go a lot further. We've used slightly less than one pot of Dirty Down for this entire scenery set. Although using the Dirty Down Rust is a personal favourite of mine, not everybody has this pot of paint at home. So what we're going to do is do an alternate version just using some Citadel paints which you might have scattered around. So after our undercoats, what we're going to do is heavily thin down Mournfang Brown. So we're probably looking at one paintbrush's worth of Mournfang Brown and six paintbrushes of water. And we're just going to coat over the entire scenery. Just keep working it into those crevices and creases. And you might see it pull away here and there. Just keep working at it. And once it's dry, you'll get a nice coat or at least a tone of brown. And then after the Mornfang Brown, all we're going to then do is just apply Troll Slayer Orange with the same mix. And again, that's just going to add to that rust effect. And lastly, to add a bit of texture, especially around near the base of the scenery or corridors, we're going to use some Typhus Corrosion. Now you want to use an old brush here because this will mess up your brush. With our rust effects now applied, regardless of which one you choose, we're now going to move on to our next steps, and first of all, we're going to use bar red here. And this is to pick out some nice spot colours. So we're looking at picking out the odd light, valves, as well as like things around doors and handles as well. Now with the bar red, I'm using it straight from the pot. And don't worry, it may look quite bright to start off with, but as it dries, it will dull down and fit nicely with your ancient corridors. Now, even though I'm really happy with this rust effect, what I'm gonna do is just pick out some of those edges a little bit using a dry brush of iron hand steel. Again, just working gently from the top, and I'm just picking out a few subtle ones here and there. You don't have to go over the entire corridor section. And don't forget to do this on all your little bits of scatter, as well as all those barricades. Now, with all our corridors rusted up, a bit of spot colour applied here and there, and some dry brushing done, you could just leave it at that 
However, I'm just gonna add some extra details. I'm gonna pick out some TV screens or consoles or terminals, however you wanna to refer to it. So first of all, we're gonna be using some grace here. I'm gonna thin it down slightly so I get a nice even coat build up a couple of times. But what you will find is it will mix in with that dirty down rust if you've gone for that option. If you haven't, then it won't do that. But if it does, it will add to that effect, which will look quite nice and make it look a little bit tainted. So with using the grace here, we're just picking out those terminals and consoles. And if you want to, just pick out the old one here and there, as the ship is probably millennia old and most have stopped working. With our grey sear now dry, what we're now going to do is get some Carandros green and just apply that over those consoles. I'm applying it quite heavily, and as you'll notice on some of the sections where I've not actually painted the consoles with grey sear, I'm also applying it there because they're turned off or just not working. With our quick and easy consoles now done, what we're now going to do is move on to picking out those skulls scattered across. Again, they're only random ones here and there. And for that, we're just using a bit of screaming skull and just gently dry brushing over the top. And to tie in those details with the rest of the Galadark scenery, what we're now going to do is get some dirty down rust. Again, mixing it down like we've done in the lid. I'm just going to apply those over those details and that will help add age and make it look nice and corroded. So it doesn't just stand out too much. For our crate, what we're going to do is pick those out of an undercoat of Death Guard Green because we undercoated our crute in the crute video with Death Guard Green. If you don't have any Death Guard Green, any undercoat will do here, whether it's red, blue, grey, doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is get some dirty down rust, not a surprise, thin it down and just smother those crates in it. And in some places, all I'm going to do here is just get some neat dirty down rust just for like some nice rust effects and just splodge it on like so. With our corridors and scatter scenery now thoroughly weathered, our Galadark scenery is finished. Phew. And it only took me about five hours to resolve, so that's pretty good going. Now, if you want to know how to paint our Navy Breaches and our Crute Kill Team, just check out the links here, and you'll be able to see how we did those as well. Now, there's a whole bunch of links in the description below. Everything we've used in this video can be bought from Element Games, so do check out that affiliate link because it helps us. <laughs> Fine. Doesn't cost you any extra, but it helps support our channel. <laughs> we just used that one, that was so funny. <laughs> also, to make it easier and more affordable for you guys at home, what we've tried to do is minimise the paint count and repurpose as many as we can across the three videos in this series, just so you don't have a metric tonne of paint to try and do this set. Now, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyable, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down here somewhere. Mm, I can never remember where it is, but it's definitely down here somewhere. Also, you can support us on our Patreon channel where you'll get all sorts of cool benefits like Discord and pollen rights and behind the scenes. Now, if you did find this series of videos useful and want to see more, do let us know in the comments. And if you have painted any of your models or miniatures in these schemes that we've used in these videos, do tag me on Instagram or Twitter. Well, until the next time, farewell, love you all, bye-bye.